One of the newest classes of drugs in multiple myeloma is a group of therapies known as bispecific antibodies. They are a form of immunotherapy where we can engage a patient's own immune system to fight their myeloma. They are also known as bispecific T-cell engagers or, or just bispecifics. They are similar to monoclonal antibodies that we've described before. How exactly? Bispecifics, like monoclonal antibodies, can attach to a myeloma cell by something on the cell's surface, what we call an antigen. But they are also different than monoclonal antibodies. Bispecifics have a second arm that can engage a local immune cell to activate it to destroy the myeloma. That is why they are called bispecific, because they have two arms. One arm hooks on the myeloma cell, and the other arm hooks onto a local immune cell, usually a T cell. This dual effect is very important. It leverages the action of a monoclonal antibody in identifying the target on the myeloma cell, but it also, it's important because it engages more of the immune system by activating a nearby T cell. We know that T cells are white cells that are essentially soldier cells that can be activated to destroy other cells. When we perform CAR T cell therapy, or chimeric antigen T cell therapy, we remove T cells from patients. Then we train them or manufacture these T cells to recognize and attack myeloma cells once they're given back to patients. With bispecific antibodies, we simply deliver a drug that brings together the myeloma cell and the local T cell to engage them together. This means that patients do not need to have their T cells collected, but we give the drug directly to the patient, off the shelf as it were. That way, the bispecific antibody can work immediately to treat the patient's multiple myeloma. These agents can be given intravenously or subcutaneously in the skin. They're usually given in a step-up dosing strategy, meaning lower doses are given for the first few times to reduce the risk of side effects. They must be given at an approved institution. Some centers administer bispecifics as an inpatient procedure, while others do as an outpatient procedure. When given as an outpatient procedure, a remote monitoring is used to detect potential side effects when the patient is at home. Several bispecific antibodies have been approved and many more are being developed. One of the important differentiators of these treatments is the target or antigen that they adhere to on the cell surface of myeloma. The most common target is BCMA, or B-cell maturation antigen. Other targets include GPRC5D and FCRH5. I discuss these other targets in another Myeloma Made Simple video. There's a lot of excitement about these agents. One reason is their overall response rate. There's a variability between the different bispecifics, but in general, response rates range from approximately 60% to 75% in patients with heavily pretreated multiple myeloma. At present, three approved bispecific antibodies are teclistimab, also known as tecfeli, talquetamab, or talve, and elranatumab, or elrexfio. Each of these is approved for a patient who has had at least four prior lines of therapy, including a proteasome inhibitor, an immunomodulatory drug, and a monoclonal antibody. Bispecific antibodies have unique side effects. As with CAR T-cell therapy, patients can experience cytokine release syndrome, or CRS, especially when first being treated. To reduce the risk of CRS, some bispecific agents have a lower step-up dose. CRS often starts with a low-grade fever, but can progress to low blood pressure requiring in-hospital monitoring. CRS can range from grade one to four. Most CRS with bispecifics is only grade one or two, but patients must be monitored carefully to prevent progression to a higher grade. CRS may be treated with agents such as tocilizumab, steroids, and supportive care. Most CRS occurs within the first week of the first dose of a bispecific antibody. Another potential side effect is a neurological one called ICANS, or Immune Effector Cell Associated Neurotoxicity Syndrome. This tends to occur later than CRS. ICANS can include almost any neurological symptom and includes confusion, headache, or seizures. It is usually treated with steroids in supportive care. Later effects of bispecific antibodies include low blood counts, 
low immunoglobulin levels, namely IgG, infections, and neurological symptoms. Patients should be monitored closely, especially as unusual infections can occur in patients on this kind of treatment. Often patients will require IVIG or intravenous immunoglobulin due to their low immunoglobulin levels. The dosing frequency of the drug may also be reduced. So in summary, bispecific antibodies are a novel form of immunotherapy where we can bring together a myeloma cell and a T cell to treat a patient's multiple myeloma. They are highly effective in heavily pretreated patients. Yet, we must be able to manage the side effects, especially the early ones like cytokine release syndrome and ICANs. Many more bispecifics are being developed and will become standard therapy for myeloma patients even at earlier stages of the disease course.